The video that you're listening to now is about rape and this is certainly a very difficult topic and if you have been raped then you very likely need a lot more support than we can give you in just these few minutes. But hopefully this will be a start or it might be a little something to tide you over periodically and tell you can get um, support that you need in a more long-term basis. If you have been raped recently or even a long time ago, the wounds are great and long after the physical wounds heal, there is always the psychological trauma that you have gone through and even deeper there's spiritual trauma and trauma that just goes deep into your essence. To be raped is to be violated in a way that has no description. Many, many men who go to prison are raped again and again and again. It almost becomes a lifestyle for some. Many women who grow up in extreme deprivation and poverty or a home life where there is a real disrespect for women and women are seen as sexual objects may have been raped frequently by family members or men. Many women who find themselves in a lifestyle that involves drug and alcohol abuse are often raped as a part of that drug and alcohol culture or many women choose to prostitute themselves for substance abuse, but in effect, they're allowing these men to rape them in order to sustain a habit that is out of control. So in whatever form it takes, anybody who's being used as a sexualized object by somebody who is exerting inappropriate power over another. It's not a crime of passion, it's a crime of power. That person is being raped. And so, first of all, to forgive yourself, because many people blame themselves for putting themselves into that circumstance, being the wrong place at the wrong time, or in some way, especially for children, feeling in some way like they have allowed this to happen to themselves. If you've been raped, report the crime to the police and make sure you get the protection and the support that you need. If there is a therapy support person available when you report this crime or if there's a community mental health center or a therapist that you know that provides a group of supportive people, try it and see if that helps. Certainly go along with everything that lawyers and police recommend in order to get this person arrested and off the street so that they don't hurt anybody else. Now for you, the healing that has to happen. In some ways you will have this trauma and pain with you very likely for the rest of your life. This is one of those things that you will always remember and you will always feel deeply violated. But it still means that you can start your healing and giving yourself 
time and lots of gentle, loving attention, little by little, the trauma can leave. At first, you may find yourself having great distress, what we might even call post-traumatic stress disorder, where you are filled with anxiety and fear about being in the world. You may feel very frightened and anxious about going outside or being some place by yourself or any time that you feel vulnerable. You may all most or fully have anxiety attacks. And it may be helpful to get some medication to help with that for a while. And there's no reason why you should not get some medication if you need it. Now, again, just as in all traumas, the more you can talk about what happened to you with supportive, caring people, not with anybody who would diminish or discount what happened to you, the better. The best healing happens by sharing the trauma with others. Again, you can keep a journal, you can do an art uh, diary, you can write poetry, any vehicle that helps move deeply uh, hidden and buried trauma, the feelings that happened up and out to the surface where you can see them, you can acknowledge what happened to you. You can truly see the pain that you've gone through and then you can say to yourself, this was an awful, awful thing that happened to me. And then you can give yourself the supportive words that you need. If you find yourself being critical of you or judging yourself, then slow down and consider if you were your best friend would you want to say the things you're saying to yourself your trauma is real and it needs to be recognized for what it is a, a great event a horrible event that happened to you that you did not ask for. Meditation is a wonderful thing to do for any trauma, for healing trauma. At first it may actually feel like it's increasing your anxiety, but practice meditating with the idea that you're sweeping a healing light down through your body sweeping out the trauma, sweeping out the pain, and little by little washing it out of you, taking your time, seeing it visibly leave through the bottoms of your feet, from the palms of your hand, washing the trauma out of you. If you know other people that have gone through this experience, get together with them. The more people who share the traumas that have happened to them, the more it actually gives other people permission to talk about their pain and trauma. Rape, like sexual abuse and other um, sexualized crimes of great violence are hidden and crimes against women are hidden and interestingly many men who are raped are almost more reluctant to talk about it than women. The more we let all of these violent events become known and become public, the more there will be an outcry to help stop the violence that is rampant everywhere in our society 
and in societies throughout the world.